everyone, it's Melinda. Uh, today we're going to be looking at my collection of tourmaline crystals. Um, tourmaline is a name for a really large group of boron silicate minerals, so there are many, many more in existence than what I have here. Um, this is just what I happen to have so far in my collection. Um, one that I don't have is dravite, which is a, a brown tourmaline, and I've been looking forward to getting that into my collection, so I think that'll be my next one. Um, we do have some here in Ontario, Canada. Uh, it's just a little hard to get your hands on. It's, a, it's difficult to, to rock hound these days. Uh, there is a property that used to allow uh, mineral enthusiasts on, but it has since changed owners, and I don't believe that owner allows people on anymore. So, sadly, that is, you know, no longer in the books. <clears throat> However, there are other people who have found some... Uh, nearer the Ottawa area, so you never know, perhaps I will get a piece. <laughs> um, okay, so all tourmaline crystals share a common crystal structure and similar physical properties, but they vary tremendously in their overall chemical composition. Um, so like I said, they're crystalline boron silicate minerals, but they can be compounded with elements such as aluminum, iron, magnesium, sodium, lithium, or potassium. Um, and that's what kind of accounts for their very wide range of compositions and colors and even color zoning within a single crystal. Um, they are actually believed to have more colors and color combinations than any other mineral group. So we're going to start with squirrel black tourmaline. There's my specimen, my biggest crystal. This one was purchased, not hounded. However, we can quite easily find black tourmaline here in Ontario. There's a wonderful location for it that we do visit on, I believe, both of my May tours. This one is quite large and was worth a little, a little bit of a pretty penny. <laughs> Look at those striations in the structure. There are a lot of black crystals out there, um, but the striations, the structure of black tourmaline is what makes it stand out, you know? It's pretty, if you see that, you pretty much know that you have black tourmaline. Especially if the area calls for it, of course if the research agrees. <laughs> Here's another purchased piece. You can see the black tourmaline there. And this is a pretty common matrix for it. You've got a little bit of smoky quartz here where my thumb is pointing. Some feldspar, very light colored, possibly albite feldspar, and then beautiful sheets, nice big hunk of a book really, of muscovite mica. And I say muscovite due to the color because it's like a very silvery, slight gold tinge color. There are a lot of varieties of mica. Now I'm going to start showing you some that I have found at the location I bring people on my tours. Quaddaville, Ontario. You kind of see the striations shining there in the light. So black tourmaline, squirrel tourmaline is actually the most common tourmaline in the world. It makes up about 95% if not more of the world's tourmaline. So it's quite common in comparison to the other ones. And this one here is in, again, a whitish, maybe pinkish feldspar. This one's got beautiful striations on it. Again, in feldspar. Isn't that beautiful? I love this little one. There's some really nice structure. Oh, I just love that. 
This is a little beauty. Yeah. There's something just so appealing about that beautiful structure and how the light shines on it. So squirrel tourmaline is actually um, the sodium iron N member of the group of tourmalines. And the name squirrel, I'm probably botching that by the way. <laughs> uh, but the name squirrel has been documented, I believe it was 1400 AD. Um, there was a village known as squirrel. It's now called, ooh, I'm going to botch this too, but like Skorlo, uh, but in Saxon Germany it was called Skorl, and the village had a nearby uh, tin mine that was looking for the mineral Cassiterite, Cassiterite. Um, but it was documented that it also had black tourmaline there in abundance, so that is the assumed kind of, I don't know, earliest <laughs> mention of it. And I just love little historical tidbits like that. I find them so interesting. Here's a nice solid hunk. And again, these are all from the same area here in Ontario. This is from the same area, but has a, a different looking matrix. And you can tell that the matrix grew uh, in conjunction with these beautiful uh, tourmaline crystals and allowed these crystals to shape their structure by the striations that you can see in the faces. I don't know if I can get a good enough. Do you see that? On that face? See me? Isn't that wonderful? And that's a little bit of light albite feldspar. But yeah, isn't that just so interesting? I love this piece. Here's another one, tiny one in the same sort of matrix. Possibly a clear albite feldspar or smoky cords. I'm leaning more towards feldspar, to be honest, but you can never know, really, until you test it. And here's a tiny, tiny little crystal, <laughs> probably with cat hair, always with me. But look at that beautiful little solid crystal all the way around. Teeny tiny, but still, I don't mind. I love it. See if I could get closer to it. Isn't that just adorable? <laughs> yes, sometimes minerals are cute. There we go. So it's quite common for black tourmaline or squirrel to grow in quartz, grow along with quartz, such as this piece. And at oftentimes, too, you can find tumbled stones, the next one I'll show you, um, that have little tiny needles of black tourmaline and quartz. And this is referred to as tourmalinated quartz. There we go. This is quite typical of what you would find for tumbled stones. You can see the little needles of black tourmaline inside. I wanted to mention that uh, there is a kind of a modern common belief that black tourmaline uh, can help with electromagnetic smog, like kind of a, a radiate, an actual radiation that we get from uh, our computers and cell phones and such. Um, and, you know, it's very, very controversial. I've read about it. I've watched videos and... 
It seems to me that it maybe aids a little tiny bit, brings down that uh, radiation level s a smidge. <laughs> um, personally, that's good enough for me. I don't know. I just like to believe things, even if they're not 100% scientifically uh, proven. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that is a common belief, and I just wanted to, you know, let you guys know about that. It is highly debated, but interesting nonetheless. <laughs> okay, so the next one I want to show you is Rubellite Tourmaline. This one comes from Minas Gerais. Gerais? In Brazil. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? So the red, pinkish, sometimes violet color is due to iron and manganese being present inside the crystal structure. And there's a bit of debate, as is usual with the mineral world, <laughs> about rubellite. Um, some folks truly believe that it has to be highly saturated to be considered that, that the color has to be quite impressive. Um, this one's quite saturated, but the crystal structure isn't maybe perfect. I'm quite pleased with it nonetheless, but um, it has still been given that title as sold. And even though this type of tourmaline can be found around the world, it's still rather rare and can be quite expensive. Nice quality uh, specimens actually are, are worth more than rubies, which is, you know, also a very highly sought after gemstone. And here's my lovely little piece. <laughs> of green tourmaline in a quartz point. And green tourmaline is called verdolite. I'm assuming like ver, like en français. <laughs> um, and the green color is due to iron and titanium. Let's see if I could get... Oh, that's nice. Isn't that beautiful? Some people say Verdolite is just like a, a name, a nickname given to it, that it's not a true mineral identity. Um, but there is an entry for it on MindAt, so that's good enough for me. But it doesn't hurt to say green tourmaline as well, right? And I don't know if the video is doing this justice, but it is quite gemmy. And the most latest addition to my tourmaline family is the Albate tourmaline that was uh, gifted slash traded to me by a very lovely and wonderful rock hound uh, here in Ontario. Um, that is one of my most exciting <laughs> additions to my collection. I am so grateful for them. <laughs> um, so Elbate is a very well-known and extremely valuable form of tourmaline. Uh, most of the multicolored tourmalines are the Elbate variety. Um, and they can be colored by trace uh, amounts of impurities that kind of tint the crystal. Um, and sometimes even allow for like multicolored zonation within a single crystal. Uh, those impurities could include aluminum, iron, magnesium, sodium, lithium, or potassium, and any variety of those as well. Um, so here are my pieces of Canadian Elbate tourmaline. And it looks to me like it's in a mica schist uh, matrix, probably with little bits of uh, feldspar as well. So this elevate comes from Quebec here in Canada, and it comes from the only lithium pegmatite that we have in the Granville province. It is this one you can see is dark on the outside, like a very dark green or dark blue. And then on the inside, it turns kind of like a yellowy green color. 
Some people believe that the exterior of these crystals, the really dark exteriors, are actually a combination of elbate and black tourmaline squirrel. But again, that's something that, you know, people debate and discuss. I just like to know it all. I just find it all really fascinating. <laughs> Yes, I love this piece. And you can still see the striations within the structure, even though this is a more gemmy albate version of tourmaline. Very excited. This one is my absolute favorite because it is quite gemmy on the inside. So this one is also kind of a dark green, dark blue on the outside of the crystal. And then on the inside, it's like a bluish green, olive green, yellow. There's even some like slight pinkish tinges around near the outside of it. I just love it. <laughs> and it looks like it's stuck with some, uh, yeah, some feldspar, some white feldspar, possibly albite. Isn't that just beautiful? This actually comes from a mine that was worked in 1908 to look for a gem tourmaline, uh, but according to the research, <laughs> that venture failed because the crystals are fractured. They're not, you know, true high quality crystals, but as a rock hound, I don't even care. It's just, <laughs> I'm still quite extremely thrilled by this one. <laughs> yeah. All right, there we go. So these are all of the tourmalines I have so far. I hope you guys enjoyed this little video. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.